Hello, everybody. This is Steve Grizzetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix.com Guide to CyberLink Power Director. And here we are in Power Director 2024, looking at some of the features in the program. One of the changes that CyberLink made when they redesigned version 2024 is that along the left-hand side, there used to be various rooms. And these rooms were for media, they were for titles, they were for transitions. Now you access those rooms along the top of the window. And they've streamlined it a little bit and left some of the rooms off of here. So if you wanted to record narration, which is what I want to do in this particular tutorial, there's not an obvious place to do it. You'll notice that the audio mixing room, which used to be located along the left-hand side of the program, is no longer accessed by clicking on one of these shortcuts. So if I want to record audio, where I go is to the media room, where I am right now, and along the top of that panel, or along the top of that room, is a record button, and that will launch the narration recording room. So if I click on that, here we are. Now the narration tool has a number of preferences and settings. If you are using more than one input device to your computer, so I only have a microphone plugged into my computer, but if you also had a webcam plugged into the computer, you'd have to choose the device that you want to record with. So to click on this button at the top of the panel, you see it's set for microphone. You would have other options in this drop down menu if you had other inputs, audio inputs into your computer. If you click on Mixer, it will open up your Windows preferences. But we'll leave it as is set right now. If you click on Profile, you can select which audio profile to use. The default profile is 48K at 16-bit mono. That's just fine for what we're recording right now. And then there are preferences. Do you want to have a three second countdown before the recording begins? Do you want auto fade in and auto fade out added to your narration? I don't think those two are necessary, but I'm going to leave it again at its default setting, which adds a three second delay before the recording begins. So we'll click cancel here. And now we're ready to record. Although the very first time you record, you're going to have another pop-up window. We'll show you that in just a moment, but I want to point out one more thing. You notice down here, you have the option of muting all tracks when recording. I recommend you do that because if you don't, you're going to hear feedback. You're going to get feedback here from the video track, the video's audio track, and the music track that is on your timeline. So with that said, I'm going to select that option, move the playhead to where I'd like my recording to appear, Click record, and there's my pop-up window. You'll only see this the first time you press record. This is where do you want your recording to be saved to on your timeline. I have it set for below track one. In fact, I've left track two empty here, so there's room for it. But you can set it to below where any track you want, wherever there's an empty track for your narration to lay. So now we're all set to go. When I press record, I'll get a three second delay. And there it is. Our trip to the south began with a drive through the Great Smoky Mountains. Click on stop. And there's my recording down on the timeline. I can test drive it, see how it sounds. I'm actually going to mute the tracks here for or disable the audio on my main video track one. There we go. And I'm going to disable the audio on my track where my music is down here on video track or audio track five. There we go. So we, we will only hear the narration when I play back and it sounds like this. Our trip to the south began with a drive through the Great Smoky Mountains. I like the sound of that. So let's move the playhead a little further down and we'll record one more narration. Click record. We'll get the three second countdown again. Three, two. It was a long trip, but it was full of beautiful scenery. And that's it. I can continue to record narration as I need to or as I want to throughout my movie. So the narration tool available under the media room, there it is, or in the media room, and very simple to use, very intuitive. Now, if you want to know more about how this program works, be sure to check out the many tips and tutorials we have at moviepix.com. I'm Steve Grizzetti. And I hope to see you again real soon. Take care.